So just a quick update. Um, it's March 9th, Sunday, and um, making some progress, I think. Been doing a lot of traveling, so now I'm back and uh, knocking a few things out. Let's take a look. So I was able to install the canopy as well as the top skins. Both of those are now permanently in place. I didn't have much trouble with the canopy. Uh, this is the newer version, so I think um, it, there's been some improvements made to it. So it pretty much fit in place. I didn't have to do a lot of sanding or anything. Um, fortunately, I have this chain hoist up here, which really allowed me to just kind of ease it into place and lift it on and off a few times until I got it where I needed. Um, and this uh, canopy doesn't have the retaining strips, which the KAI talks about, so I don't need those. It's actually embedded, that the retaining strip itself is embedded into the flange underneath this area here, because as I was drilling these holes, metal shavings were coming out, so that told me that that aluminum was there and in place. Um, yep, I got it all sealed and uh, pretty happy with the way it came out. No real issues. I, with the top skin, I did have a couple spots here where this was really puckered up. So I drilled out these four rivets, which were 3.2 millimeter, and then drilled those holes out to four millimeter, reinserted the 3.2 millimeter, and that relieved a lot of the pucker. Just a touch of it here, but it's not as evident as it was previously. And I don't think uh, structurally that's gonna be any kind of an issue by enlarging those holes there. So I already filled all my uh, dome head rivets with super fill, so those just need to be sanded. Um, I don't have the top skin for the parachute cover. It didn't come with my kit for some reason. So I am now requesting one and I don't know when I'm gonna get it. So I just sent an email this morning asking when that might happen um, because it won't be long before I'll be pushing this thing back into the booth to finish the, the painting, the top of the fuselage in the canopy. Um, but it looks pretty good overall. Inside, I have installed or started to Clico in place these front side skins on both sides um, here and then on the other side over here. Um, and I did build this avionics tray. I think I might have mentioned that previously. Um, still pulling. Pretty much the only thing I have left to pull is I'm going to, I've ordered the parachute cable although I'm not ordering the parachute together. I'm going to install the parachute cable. Get this out of the way. Uh, and install that while I've got everything pulled out here. Um, and, uh, you know, you just start thinking about all the things now that you're, the, really the next step is gonna be this, this boot cow that goes over the top here. Um, and once that's in place, you know, you're really gonna have a, a tough time with any of these firewall penetrations. So, you know, now's the time to start thinking about what has to, what has to go into that before we put the boot cowl in place. So uh, one of the things I've started working on here is the Navaflow fuel manifold from uh, Aerospace uh, innovations. So this is that there replaces the Rotax manifold and I've already started to install it. One of the things I, I do have a mistake here I need to point out. Um, let me go grab this. So the instructions tell you to drill cut two holes here and here using this template that they provide you. So that's where your bulkhead fittings are gonna go here to um, for your feed line and your return line. So I went ahead and did that and I installed the manifold 
with the gascalator all in place. But I've also bought the, their fuel lines with it as well. Unfortunately, once I put those bulkhead fittings in and, and, and then brought these lines in, they don't fit. These lines are, this one's too big. Um, I can't get it without it running into something. It's going to be a problem. This one's an even, this is the feed line. That's an issue. So I've gone ahead and I've covered that. I don't know if you can see it inside here. Down here, right there. I basically just covered those holes. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll take some 3M fire barrier sealant and just cover these holes here. But I cut new holes and I, I put it in this channel because one of the other issues, besides the fact that um, the fuel lines don't match up with the predetermined holes, the other issue is it's so flimsy because this stainless steel firewall is thin. I forget what the thickness is, but it's thin and it just kind of moves around. And it's, and I, you know, you really don't feel like you're getting a tight connection for those bulkhead fittings. And I just wasn't feeling very comfortable with that. So putting the bulkhead fittings into these two openings here will really give it a little bit more um, backing or a little, I'm almost acting like a doubler and a little more strength to hold that in place. Okay, so now I've installed the bulkhead fittings and I can tell you this is a much better connection. These do not, there's no give, there's no side to side or up or down. And I'm feeling much more comfortable about attaching those. I mean, <laughs> think about this line right here. That's your lifeblood, buddy. That thing's gonna, that thing's got to be, that's the feed line from all your fuel tanks. So it has to be, perfect or um, could be problems. By the way, I'm using a tool, you know, they talk about using a step drill to cut these holes and I like step drills in the right application, but the step drill has a tendency to just really mess up holes and um, make a mess out of them. I use these um, sheet metal uh, hole cutters and uh, they're much better, much cleaner. And then uh, for, the, for the bulkhead fittings, this 9 16 hole cutter is perfect. I mean, it works absolutely perfectly and um, makes those holes. I mean, it cuts like butter even through that stainless steel. So that's the uh, update right now for the Sling TSI.